So hi, everyone, and welcome back to Big Brainer Online Sessions. Uh, today, I want to speak about how we actually convert our followers into actual clients. Because um, I know when we create content, we sometimes afraid that it's not going to look like a hard sell. And then we feel if it's not a hard sell, so how can we actually convert them uh, to buy from us, uh, to buy our products, our services? Um, and one of the best ways for us to convert our followers from uh, to fans is actually by using personal connections and building relationships. Um, so first, we need to remember that it really all starts by getting to know our audience. Because once we know our audience, we know where to find them, how to engage with them, when to engage with them. We're getting all the information and eventually our audience are the people that we buy. They are the one who's buying the products uh, from us. So it's very important that we're going to get to know them because this is the really basic part of it when we're building uh, a strong brand. Um, brand. So I want to share with you some ways, not about how to define our audience, but actually how we can understand more about them. Because uh, when we building our business at the beginning, right, we identify who's the audience, we're writing a description, we try to um, describe them from the demographic side, financial status, like other stuff they do, habits they have, and so on. But we really want to make sure that we're not just identifying them, we're also understanding them, learning as much as we can about them. Um, so one of the ways, for example, for us to do it is actually to implement different type of surveys uh, to get a direct feedback from our audience. It can be something that you can create on Google Forms. Um, it can be something that we are doing on online on the different social media platform. But the purpose of it is to actually ask them questions learn more about them, uh, learn about what their triggers are, what they're not sure um, they're good with, what type of change they want to, uh, you know, um, succeed with, uh, what challenges they are going through. And there's a lot to actually do. So for example, we can ask, and I can ask, what do you think about social media? And uh, everyone will have a different maybe type of response, but through that, I can learn about what's triggering my audience and through that to actually use it in my benefit to build a relationship with them, to engage with them um, and so on. Another option is to use the analytics. Uh, I know when people think about marketing our business, it sounds all about the creativity part, um, about maybe more fun and glamour and like just like ads and so on. Uh, but it's way more than that. It's all about actually the numbers of the analytics. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're utilizing the analytics to learn about your audience behavior uh, from the different platforms. So you can check on each and every social media platform on like when are they active, what other type they, of things they like, uh, where their location, um, if you do also from a newsletter. So from a lot of different things, you can really learn about their behavior uh, just from actually looking at the numbers and analyzing them. Um, and again, it also goes for your website. So if you use, for example, Google Analytics, you can find out there a lot of information. Also, for example, you can learn, are they using more mobile or uh, the web uh, and so on. So that's another way for you to learn more about your audience. A third one is actually to what we call in marketing to develop a buyer personas. The personas is your audience. So we want to understand them. We want to understand their behavior. Okay. So we want to understand it based on the demographic data, behavior patterns, and the preferences. Uh, and this will actually also going to help us to really understand more about how they're making the decision. What is the process that they're going through? And sure, that will know better how to communicate with them, how to engage with them how to actually lead them um, to the final result, which is to buy our product or service. So for example, if I wanna look at this, I can ask myself, um, where like in the steps of making the decision they're getting stuck? Is it because they're lacking of information? So I'll know how to create more information to help them to make the decision. Is it because of certain type of emotion, insecurities, fears, and so on? And through that, I'll know in which step to come. Or maybe it's not in like when they're trying to like learn more about a product. It's maybe more about 
um, making a decision which one they want to choose to work with or to buy from. Um, and then they'll choose those with the better credibility and so on. And that's what we really want to learn as much as we can about the audience because all of it is actually going to help us in converting them from followers to actual clients. But we want to make sure that we're focusing on building relationship with our audience. Um, it, this is something I always repeat because, as I said, like in, when I started, uh, in the past, people used to do marketing as a hard sell, right? They're like putting in the face, just buy this product, buy the service. Um, but it really changed because people are making more decisions based on their emotion. And when you are basing your decision on the emotion, you really want to feel like you created a type of bond with some, someone, that you have a type of connection, that you build a relationship. Because people buy from people, and people buy from people that they have a connection with, that they're building relationship with. And if they're building relationship, it means that they, at one point, they're trusting that person. And if they trust that person, there's a higher chance of them buying from that person. Okay, so that's why if you're looking on how to convert our followers to fans, this is it. This is what we really need to do and really need to focus on. So one of the things to help you with this is authenticity. Because as I said, people buy from people and people are more likely to become fans when they feel that there is a real connection, that there's something strong there. So that's why it's very important to be true to ourselves, to be genuine, just to be us, no mask, no filters, just us. And for each and every one of us, there is a specific audience that we want to work with, that they will want to, uh, build that relationship with because we need to remember that we cannot be everything to everyone. So that's why we want to make sure that we're focusing on being ourselves and attracting the people that we will resonate with them, but they will also going to resonate with us. So it's kind of win-win to both sides. We want to use it as well, um, the authenticity part of it to share in our content, in our chats, if we're going, for example, for networks and so on, that we share real experiences, uh, the emotions, and we use it in order to get a stronger bond between us. It helps to actually create a deeper connection with our audience, and that's what we're looking for, because when there is a deeper connection, there's a higher chance that want to, they will trust us. Uh, so authenticity is, like you see, like it builds trust, okay? And it helps you to build meaningful relationship. And that's the purpose. It's not just about getting more people to buy my product or service. It's to actually build a connection with them that today they're going to buy this product or service and next time they'll buy something else. And when I'll launch a new thing, they'll be the first one to, uh, you know, that want to adopt it, that want to buy it. Um, so be yourself. Um, and that's the most important thing. Have some empathy, okay? Because when you're engaging with others, you want to actually demonstrate it to your audience that you genuinely understand them, that you see them, that you recognize them, okay? You want to validate their emotion and experiences because usually they're going to come to you because they have something like a challenge, a pain, a struggle. Doesn't matter the size of it, Okay. They have it and they feel uncomfortable with it and they want to act, but they're not sure what to do and how to do it and how to succeed and how to overcome that emotion. <clears throat> so by you showing empathy and sharing with them that you understand them, that you see them and you use it like in your interactions with them and you're acknowledging their feelings and their experiences. And through that, you can actually show them, I, I'm here, I see you, I understand you, you're not alone. Look at me, I've overcome it. And if I've done it, you can do it as well. And I'm here with you. And again, it doesn't matter what you sell. It doesn't matter if it's a product or it's a service. There's always a type of a trigger and emotion. And the other person, all they want to know is that someone see them, that they're not like transparent. Um, so show your audience that you see them, you understand them. That's how you're going to establish a deeper connection, uh, foster trust, and through that, you're going to create a space for them that they're going to feel comfortable to communicate, to engage, to ask questions, and just to succeed in what they were trying to overcome. So help them to flourish. 
I want to share some strategies on how we build a stronger connection with our audience because I know it sounds like, okay, so build a connection, but how do you actually do it? What's the different options for this? So I want to share with you a few of them now. One of them is building a community. I think uh, COVID really emphasized the fact that a lot of people want to feel part of something. They want to feel belong to a place. They want to have a safe place, a place that they can ask questions, that they can be themselves, that no one judge them. And that's why when you want to build a strong brand, you want to build a community around your brand. Even if the brand is you or you're selling certain products, it's still, you want to build even the big companies. Um, I'll give an example like Nike. Nike focusing all the time on building communities. That's why they sponsor marathons and other sports activities. You can see it also with different cars, uh, car racing and so on. They do it because that's a way to build a community around the brand. So you want to create a community to your audience, uh, a place that they have common interests and you want to encourage them to collaborate with you, with each other. I'm a real big believer that if I can link between some of my clients uh, so they can collaborate and succeed together, I think it's amazing. And that's what they're looking for. And again, it goes back to what I said just a few minutes ago, about the empathy, about being authentic. So showing them, I'm here, I see you, and that's why I know who to link you to. A community also creates um, a sense of, as I said in the beginning, of belonging, okay? Loyalty. Um, and that's really leading them to come more often to your events, to your sessions, uh, to your shop, um to buy more from you uh, and not just for the first time so let's say even if you do for example consultation so they're going to come back if you're creating um deliveries or any type of services they will want it and that's the purpose because that's the community uh that's why for example for female entrepreneurs all those networking groups are working because they all support each other. Um, and that's what your audience is looking for. That's how you can actually convert them from fans to actual clients. Uh, uh, sorry, from followers to actual clients. A community also provides a valuable platform for them, okay? Um, they can receive feedback and you can receive feedback for them. It's enabling you both to understand each other and you to understand their preferences, um, addresses, concerns, ask them questions. And if I'll go back to how you learn more about your audience, in a community, you can ask questions, you can use a survey, you can learn a lot from them because your audience will tell you everything. They'll tell you exactly what they want to hear, what they want to learn about, what they want to know more about. They'll tell you everything, when and where, all of that information they're going to tell you. All you need to do is just ask. And there are different ways of asking. And also, it's really going to help you by having a strong community that they'll start sharing your content and what you do with others. And that's the word to mouth. And that's really going to help you to amplify your reach and potentially attracting more followers. But it's not just about the more followers. The actual thing you need to focus on is they're going to bring you the right audience because usually our friends are similar to us in certain things. So it means that they're going to be similar to you and that's how you're going to attract a better audience, an audience that you both will resonate with each other, uh, which also going to help you with the accuracy of getting basically more people to convert them because someone else already helped them with the decision-making process. So they're halfway there, if not all the way there to just say, yes, I'm going to buy. So if I'll go like in a straight line with everything I spoke about, uh, the next part is about the storytelling. So being attempting, being showing empathy, building a community, all of that is also based about the story that you tell them. Okay, so use the power of the storytelling uh, storytelling to convey your message, to put it out there, okay, for them to know, to understand. Also, share personal things, okay? Uh, achievements, challenges, things that you're going through. Uh, share something that they can actually see that, and that links to the part of the empathy is that I see you, I understand you, I've been there, but look where I am now. And that's the thing. So a story, a personal story, I always believe because one of the strategies um, for content is personal connection. And this is part of it. That's how you create a personal connection by sharing 
a story. Even share your why, why you do what you do. Because stories can really create an emotional connection, okay? Because there is something that you read a post with just bullet points to when you listen or watch or read a story. A story that takes you one step by the other to a certain place. And there's something there. There's something that really carried that emotional connection, that bonding. And it's really making your content to be more relatable and more memorable. Because people remember sometimes certain things from the story, or if it's a meaningful story, they'll use it and share it with others as like, oh, look what that person done and how he, he managed, how he succeeded and so on. And another thing, if related to being authentic and showing empathy is use the storytelling to express vulnerability, to share your challenges and setbacks. Um, it's the same that I always share about my journey as an entrepreneur, how it wasn't that easy to build a brand from scratch in a different country, how it took me a long time to build my confidence, to be in front of the camera. Uh, and actually funny because like, my business, building my brand, helped me more to build my personal brand, which is myself. Um, so that's why I like to share it because if I've overcome it, I believe that others can do it as well. So show it. Don't be afraid to show because it's really going to help you to create more genuine and human connection with your audience. And remember, people buy from people and people buy from people they trust and they have a connection with. So use the story to demonstrate to your audience that the change is possible, it's doable, and you're going to be there to support them. And that's one way of how you can use the storytelling. Another way is to creating valuable content. And valuable content means that you are sharing content that the audience finds as relevant, as valuable, as insightful, as helpful. Um, and you want to tailor your content to address specific needs and interests for your audience. So making them feel seem uh, and valued okay you want to show them in your content that you actually listen to them you understand them um, and that you know exactly what they want to hear about uh, provide as well uh, value through your content so that's super important it's not just to share or just put things but really think about what's relevant for your audience what they want to learn more about and provide them with that um, and it doesn't matter if it's entertainment, education, inspiration, it doesn't matter what, you want to deliver something with an extra value. Even if you, let's say, took an idea or a trend from someone else and you want to use it, make sure you bring your own unique voice and bring some extra valuable uh, tip there or um, advice or so on. And because by creating this, you can actually turn casual followers into dedicated fans because they'll know that you've got the answers and that you actually listen and that you create the type of content that they want to consume. Inclu inclusivity, oh, sorry. Uh, so make sure that your followers feel like part of the community. So this is something that's really gonna help you with the building of community. It's to really, provide them with things that they're only going to find uh, in your community uh, or things that's going to be appearing just on your community and outside of your community. Um, there will be other stuff as well, but there's certain stuff that are unique to them. Um, you as well to acknowledge and celebrate uh, their contribution um, and, you know, like create a sense that there's something special in it. Uh, that they are special. And it goes again with the part of you seeing them, you understanding them, and you making them feel special. Because uh, people, when they feel that they're involved and appreciated, um, so they're more likely to transition from followers to actual fans. So you want to make sure that even in your content, uh, you maybe share some success stories about certain people from your client's base and you highlighted them. Uh, or maybe when someone asks a question, of course, if they approve it, you take it and share it um, in that community uh, and tell them this person, like what a great question or like what a great answer they've responded and so on. 
or like any type of thing it's really related to the business but you want to use it to make sure they feel special that someone see them someone understand them uh, and that's the important part another thing is about the engagement so in order for them to move and transition from followers to actual fans is to engage with them and to make sure that they are responding to your comments, asking questions, participating in discussions if you create them, uh, and which is something super important to actually uh, create a discussion because that helps you as well to get to know your audience better. Um, and by building that communication that they ask, you answer, and so on, they ask, uh, they answer about something you ask, it really fosters the sense of community. And it makes your followers feel more valued than, again, that someone see them. Uh, and you can do different type of ways to get them to engage with you. It can be interactive content like uh, polls, quizzes. Um, if you do a live broadcast, you can ask questions. But the purpose is to create that ping pong, that the one person that your audience is asking uh, and you answering, and maybe you asking something because you want to learn more about them and they answering. So you want to create it by improving our engagement, we are increasing our exposure. And that's how it means that also if someone is engaging with you, and as you can see, I didn't mention here like liking your content because likes don't pay the bills. But if you actually create content that people comment, save, share, uh, check your website, check your offers, there's a better chance that they will be converting from followers to actual clients. And of course, the most important thing uh, that I always repeat is consistency. You want to make sure you maintain a consistent online presence, that you're consistent with the type of content you're appearing. So if I'll go on the previous slide that I spoke about uh, the engagement, this is also an important part. It's not about posting and disappearing. It's actually being consistent with your appearance, being there, giving them that sense of being part of a community. So regularly update your content. Uh, that's part of being consistent. Um, create a top of anticipation between the, and among your audience that they are waiting for your content, they're waiting to learn more, they're waiting for the next session. Because um, consistency really helps you to build credibility and also reliability uh, and uh, to be familiar with you. And it's really gonna help you to strengthen the connection uh, between them. So it really helps to build that personal connection because they know you are there. They know that you provide exactly what they need because you're being consistent. Okay, so really focus on that and build a type of routine for your followers. So they know exactly what to expect, when to expect. Uh, for example, when some are managing um, Facebook groups, for example, and the community is there, so they have like on every Monday, I do a motivational quote. On every Wednesday, there's a story. On every Thursday, there's a live and so on. And that's how you build a type of routine. So we can all do it with our content. It can be even, um, for example, I'm being consistent with having a LinkedIn article every Wednesday. So every Wednesday, I publish one. So my audience knows to expect it on every Wednesday. So this is how you want to also do with your content because eventually it helps to strengthen their relationship. It helps to build the credibility. Uh, you being a reliable uh, brand and a person, and that's very important. The next one is evaluation. Okay, you want to make sure that you're adopting and evolving with your audience uh, preferences. Uh, that's why, for example, if you look at my Instagram, you'll see how my branding started and all the changes he went along until I got to where I am now. But all the changes I made because of my audience preferences. I've always listened and made the adjustments that I needed. Um, and the reason why I don't delete it from Instagram, because I want my audience to see how I evolve as a person, as a brand. And you want to share that process. And if I'll go back to the storytelling, that's what I want to do. If we want to create empathy and we want to be authentic, we want to make sure that they know exactly every, like on the different journeys that we're doing on how we evolve, how we change. And if some of them want to change with us, that's amazing. If not, again, you cannot be everything to everyone. 
So stay up to date on trends and be open to trying new type of content formats, maybe new social media platform. You can always try and see if your audience there, if you connect them, connect with them better there. And if it works, yes. If not, all good. We can always move on. Because um, the brand that evolves really resonates better with its audience. Okay. So that really going to help you to create a stronger relationship with your audience, with your followers, which means it leads you again to have a better connection and to convert your followers to actual fans. So I just want to sum it up by saying uh, people buy from people, which is something super important to remember. And people buy from those who they have a strong connection with that they build a relationship with. If they build a relationship, it means they are trusting. If they're trusting, they're going to be loyal to your brand and your best brand ambassadors. And that's the purpose of it. That's what we're trying to achieve. This is the best way to actually convert our followers to actual clients by not chasing, by just being true to ourselves, showing some empathy, sharing stories, creating valuable content, evolving along the way and sharing that in the process, being consistent and building a community to our audience. This is how we're going to actually convert them um, to actual clients. Yes, maybe it takes more time, but this is how you build a brand with solid and strong foundations. Because once they trust you, they're going to bring more friends when it's relevant. And that's the beauty of it.